All right, good morning, everyone. Dylan here with Dylan's Home Espresso Bar, and today we are reviewing the workflow of the manual lever espresso machine, Hue Lever Presso. This has been a, a lever espresso machine that's definitely took me by surprise. Um, I wasn't sure in the beginning about the workflow of it, but been using it for the last couple days, and I really have started enjoying it. Here is the box, and I just want to have a huge shout out to Hugh for sending me this to review. Um, I always give you guys my honest feedback, no matter if I get it for free or if I purchase it. However, I am going to uh, do a full workflow review and let you know how the espresso tastes. So we're going to go ahead and get started. One thing I do want to note first before we begin is this is a spouted option, or you can go without the spouted and just go bottomless. I would go bottomless only because um, I just feel like you're going to get a better tasting shot like that and you're not hitting plastic multiple times. So I already have my kettle over here heated to 212 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and preheat the unit. So something that I like to do is you can just raise it as you go. I recommend getting a stand. Uh, this does come without a stand or you can purchase a stand. However, without the stand, it's just really hard. You're going to have to pretty much do this um, and it's going to be a, a pain. So I like to just preheat the unit. So as you see, I'll as close as possible here so you guys can see the workflow. There you go. So I just have the unit heating up right now. You can kind of Feel the plastic start to heat up and just a cup to catch it all. Just kind of go nice and slow. You don't want to put water in and then automatically let it go because it's not going to heat the unit. And the big thing about a lever espresso machine or a manual espresso machine that has no PID, you have to control that temperature. Otherwise your shots are going to be under extract, under extracted and it's just going to be really sour. So I just take up the plunge one more time, push out whatever we can, and go ahead and lift back up. So now we have our cup that caught all that water. And now this is going to get a little bit messy just when you take this off. So just I would prefer just doing it over something like a knock box. Just kind of empty the rest of that out. And then I'm just going to set this to the side here. Make sure to clean that basket out. Now, the nice thing about Hue is they do offer an IMS option. I do have that. However, I will review that later. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the stock basket now so you guys kind of get a better idea. So we're gonna start this whole process by dosing out 17.1 grams of coffee. Shout out to Brent from Good Brothers Coffee. And also shout out to Soulhand. This video is coming soon. Really nice canister to have. It is very, very nice. All right. Like I said, we're just gonna start out by doing about 17.1 grams. You can go more, you can go less. With the basket size, I think 17.1 grams is kind of the money spot. Seventeen point three. Just try to be exact if you can. 17.1. So we're gonna put this to the side. Alright. And here we go. I'm gonna be using the DF64E today. Shout out to Joe from Espresso Outlet for allowing me to review this unit as well. And here we go. And done. So I'm going to raise this tripod up so you can see the workflow a little bit better. 
Sorry about all the motion. All right, here we go. Just so you can see what I'm doing here. Zoom in. Hugh does have this really nice dosing funnel. I mean, this thing is awesome. When I say it's heavy duty, it's pretty heavy duty. So now I'm just gonna tap that to get all the grinds off of that funnel. And we're going to distribute it in there as evenly as possible. So I'm going to take my WDT Kind of get it all nice. I mean, I'm in no hurry. These steps aren't necessary, but I just like it because it does get me a little bit better extraction. And like I said, I'm in no hurry. So now you have your flat bed of grounds there. Let me turn this flashlight on just so you get a better look. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the tamper and distribution tool that they sent. This is a 51 mil millimeter unit. Get that nice and flat. And tamp. All right, so we got that all nice and neat. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to lower this tripod so you can see the shot from the bottom. I mean, the shot is pretty incredible watching it from this machine. So here we go. I'm going to lower the tripod down. Sorry for all that. And here we go. Just want to give you guys the best looking shot so you can see how good the extraction truly is with this manual espresso machine. I'm even going to take this light off and put it here just to kind of highlight that area a bit more. And here we go. Just going to put a screen on. Nothing fancy. Kind of do it like this so you can see the how I'm doing it. So now all we're going to do is we're going to add the water. I like to add it pretty much to the top here. And then... I will put my cup underneath. And then you're gonna take these and just go slow. It's not a race. I mean, when you have an espresso machine like this, I mean, you shouldn't be in a hurry anyways. Go nice and slow. And then I'll top that water off to about there. Now, this is the area where I will let it sit for a little bit when I push down. So I'm gonna let it sit there for another couple seconds. And now we're gonna go ahead with the extraction. So there's a little channeling there, as you see. We're going to go to about there and let up. All right, so here is the espresso. I'll take that out here kind of difficult on the side to take that off all right so here is the shot of espresso 
I mean, it looks really nice. Nice crema. Smells pretty good as well. And then I'm just gonna raise this up. All right, I'm just gonna turn this around and we're gonna talk about that shot of espresso. Don't mind the hair. Woke up uh, really early this morning to go to the gym and haven't done it yet. So, cheers. So that shot was a little under extracted, definitely could go probably a little finer um, and made the unit a little bit hotter. But yesterday I pulled, um, it was a different bean, I ran out of that bean, but I pulled the shot yesterday and it was probably one of the best tasting espressos I've had in a while. Uh, I was using Mexican Chiapas from Brent, uh, from Good Brothers, not that that's why it was the best tasting, but. I just think overall the extraction of the actual espresso itself was absolutely incredible. So one more time. Good. So the one thing about this unit, let me put this here so it's not dripping everywhere. The one thing about this unit, because it is a manual or oh, yeah, manual espresso machine, you wanna make sure that you preheat the unit for a longer time than I did. I just wanna make the video, I have to go to work here soon. So I wanna make a video for all of you, just for the workflow. Um, I do recommend though, if you do purchase this unit, that you do buy the stand, and you also purchase the um, the uh, funnel. Just be, or yeah, the dosing funnel, because that thing is really nice and allows you to WDT so you can get an even extraction uh, with your bed of coffee grinds. Also, this unless you have a 51 millimeter uh, tamper or distribution tool, they Hue makes their own 51 uh, millimeter, as you can see, 51 millimeter. It's backwards because I have it facing me so I can see you guys. But it's really, really nice. I think that for a unit, I think it's around, don't quote me, I think it's around $199. Uh, the box that it comes in, is right here so this is what it looks like it shows the stand like i said it doesn't come with the stand unless you buy the package with the stand it's just really hard if you didn't have the stand to push down like this and control it i mean it's doable for sure as you can see i'm doing it right now but it's just nice and easy when you have a stand and you can push down into the actual lever because sometimes if you over extract uh, it's going to be kind of tough to kind of aim for a cup and try to pull down the lever at the same time. Uh, they actually sent me the unit without the stand at first, and it was uh, pretty difficult to get. Um, it was almost like you had, to, you had to hit the cup, so I had to make sure I had a really big cup. Otherwise, if I had a small crew of cup like this, there was no way I was hitting in, in the cup the entire time, especially with the spraying. And, yeah. So you always want to make sure get the stand. On a scale of zero to 10, I mean, comparing it to what I have right now, which is the Flare Pro 2 and the Flare 58, the Flare 58 is gonna be the hands down winner. Uh, I would say I'd give the Flare 58 a 10 out of 10. I think the Flare is, for the bang, you get the best bang for your buck with the Flare 58. You're not gonna be disappointed with it. Now, and it's got also a, heat management as well so that it's just a little bit easier and all 58 millimeter port filter um i would say compared to the flare pro 2 i definitely think the workflow may be a little easier but i really enjoy using the flare as well so i would say this comes in about six and a half out of ten I think it's a good unit. You can pull some really good espresso. Now, this isn't a unit for someone who enjoys milk-based only drinks because obviously you're gonna have to have a milk frother as well. But if you're like me and you do enjoy um, espresso in the morning or in the afternoon, uh, I definitely say that for the best bang for your buck, $200 isn't gonna break the bank and with a nice paired with a nice hand grinder, uh, or even the grinder that I use, the DF64E. I think that's around 450 bucks. 
So you gotta think for about $700, you're gonna get a really nice tasting espresso. Uh, I think that uh, totally up to you all, but I think it's a great buy. I think it's a great deal. Um, it's definitely built very well. The only thing that's plastic is this main unit. Now they do sell a pro version, which they are sending me to review as well. Uh, I'm not sure the changes that they made with the pro version. I would hope less plastic and a little bit better sealing when you do your shot. That's another thing. There's a seal inside of here that you have to make sure that goes in there every time uh, because the first time that I used the unit, I didn't have the seal on properly and water shot through right around this area. And it was really hot and it burned me. So make sure you put the seal on correctly the first time and don't use this unit when you're tired because you will forget and it is um, not the most enjoyable thing to be burned by 212 degree water from your temperature kettle. So, cheers. If you all have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, I appreciate all of you guys for following my channel for review. Uh, if you have any unit you want me to review, uh, let me know down in the comments as well. If there's any comparison video of all of the tools that I have on my channel, please let me know. I am going to be doing a final review, uh, I think it's in the other room, on the Bose Tamper. So that thing is absolutely incredible. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for home use, uh, just because it's kind of expensive and it's not really necessary, but it is very enjoyable to use and you're going to get consistency each and every time back to back to back to back depending on how much you're making for everybody at home but i'm going to keep this video uh short even though it's already gone 17 minutes uh, i hope you all have a great rest of your day wherever you are and as always thank you so much for tuning into my channel my name is dylan with dylan's own espresso bar and i will catch you guys in the next one stay caffeinated peace